What does assessment do? This is a one school for all lecture by me, Andrew Thomas, at Estfol University College for my wonderful international students, which I would like you to watch by Tuesday, the 12th of September, 2023. So we're going to talk about assessment for learning. Usually when we talk about assessment, people think about uh, pupils handing in work and teachers slapping a grade on it. Well done, thank you for writing a story about the old town and feminism. I will give you a C. Um, but assessment is much more than that. And um, we talk about assessment for learning rather than assessment of learning, because assessment gives you so much more than just a piece of paper at the end of your schooling. Because teachers need to know what pupils can and can't do in order to plan their teaching. And because pupils need to know what is good and bad about their work so that they're open to having their mistakes corrected. And really importantly, they don't throw out the baby with the bathwater when they make those adjustments, um, which is to say they need to know what they can do and what they need to continue doing, because that is essential. It's quite important to know what they can't do, but it's really important they continue knowing, um, knowing what they can do, because that's what they can do. You don't know whether they're ever going to learn to do the things that they can't at present do, but the things that they can, we know they can do, so they really need to continue doing that. So that's the, um, the, the most important part of our assessment practices, is that the teachers learn something about the pupils and the pupils learn something about themselves. Um, and one of the really crucial um, aspects of this is actually a legal aspect. Um, there is the feeling of justice. Um, in the past, um, we sometimes had assessment situations where um, pupils would hand in their work and the teachers would then say, I, who am the one knowledgeable person this, in this situation, will give you this mark. Um, and, the, and the pupil might feel unfairly um, treated because they thought they were getting an assessment of their language, but it turns out that they were getting an assessment of their content. So the teacher says, well, your language was very good, but what I really wanted you to do was to quote your sources more. And if the teacher had not informed their pupil about that before they gave them that um, that piece of work, then um, then the pupil feels unjustly treated. So Good assessment um, is where the pupil knows exactly what they are being assessed by and the pupil is able to assess their own work. And that's not just because um, this means that they will learn more, but it's also because pupils have rights. And therefore, when, um, when Norway introduced this issue of assessment for learning, one of the most important things they did was to reduce this gotcha effect, whereby the teacher says, ah, well, you think you did well, but I've got you, I am the one that's clever in this situation, um, and so I will, I will give you this mark independently of what you think you deserve. And so in 2010, there was a new regulation, a general overhaul of assessment practices, including pupils' right to have an assessment um, without mark as well as with mark. So children until they are um, teenagers actually don't ever get marks in Norway. And that's one of the things that um, the, that Norwegian school system has um, has agreed with itself about that um, that marks aren't that important, letters aren't that important, but feedback is really important. But in addition to this um, to this new regulation, um, what the Norwegian government very sensibly did was to put teachers back on um, in the in the student role and they gave them training in all of these things. They didn't just say this is what you have to do now go and do it according to what the law says, but they actually um, sent researchers like me, no, I wasn't, I was actually a teacher at the time, um, around um, to tell us all about um, what the new research says about, um, about assessment. Um, notice, by the way, that with, um, that as with special needs education, it is knowledge about the pupil which is essential here. Teachers need to know what pupils can and can't do. Um, and there is an openness about the um, standards of this. It's not that the expert is secretive about how they assess people. Um, but crucially, um, this knowledge is no longer kept to one in particular um, pupil. This is generalized. Teachers no longer need to know about um, 
about normal and abnormal pupils as they did in, in the 1880s, we heard, um, but they need to know about the entire class. So it's generalized knowledge. Now, what does um, educational research say about assessment? Um, famously, in 1998, Black and William um, wrote an article inside the black box, which is to say that um, very often um, school governors or um, school boards throw resources at the school and then we hope that we will get good results at the end. Whereas Black and Williams say, well, actually, we know a great deal about what kind of inputs actually give outputs instead of saying, instead of just throwing things at school and hoping schools will do something good with it. We can find out what kind of things schools need and not least how much they cost. Maybe they don't need such expensive things. And they um, then came out with the answer that the crucial thing they need um, is um, good assessment. That is the one thing you can do that will um, that will make a massive difference in your classroom. And similarly, um, John Hattie, in his famous um, book *Visible Learning*, went through 800 meta-analyses. Meta-analyses are a um, are an overview of lots of empirical research projects, and um, and discovered that of all the things teachers can do in the classroom, um, one of the most one of the very top of the list. Um, is good assessment. Um, you can discuss pupils' work with colleagues and find out what pupils need to do and need to learn in order to make pro um, progress. So the question is an assessment for learning, how we progress. Um, and they say, Black and Williams say, thus self-assessment by pupils, far from being a luxury, is in fact an essential component of formative assessment. When anyone is trying to learn, feedback about the effort has three elements, recognition of the desired goal, evidence about the present position, and some understanding of a way to close the gap between the two. All three must be understood to some degree before anyone, before he or she can take action to improve learning in this, in this article inside the Black Book. So and there are a few um, elements to um, assessment for learning. Um, marking is no longer the teacher's secret. They need to know what they're getting towards. Uh, there is no niceness. The work is at the center of things. They know about the present position, not about themselves, but about their work. Um, and they have a clear understanding of that. Um, and improvement is assumed to be what pupils want. And, um, and they need to be able to assess their own work. Um, because if they can assess it, if they know what's wrong, they can improve it. Now, notice with this quotation, it is unclear who we're talking about. It says feedback um, has the following elements. Recognition. It doesn't say whose recognition, because the important thing is that this is a shared task. If a pupil needs something, if they need some improvement in order to progress, then both the teacher and the pupil need need to know this. The pupil needs to know what they need to do in the future, and the teacher needs to know what kind of tasks they need to set the pupil. The teacher is meant to be planning future teaching on the basis of this. So it's extremely important that, that teachers use this knowledge from the assessment for learning to plan their future, um, make their te future teaching plans. It all sounds very professional, but in practice it's all about humility, about avoiding offense, about taking in advice, about self-insight, about telling the truth about ourselves. It's about humility in school, and but also that's going to give us humility in society. So this has um, a wider political and strategic impact. So it's research-based um, and it's legal, um, but it's also got this social contact. Um, so Remember, um, this is a little bit like just we said with special needs education, it has a social context and there are lots of similarities with special needs education. Um, but there's also um, an emphasis on self-regulation, self which is an emotionally charged thing um, and, um, and, and, a, and a social situation. We want to share our society with people who are good at taking criticism and adjusting their course in life. We want those people as our, as our neighbors and our friends. Um, we want people who are interested in living their best life. The big question we need to be asking is, can we require that of them? We'll be discussing that and other things in class and the rest of the semester.